Here we are at the end of the semester. A lot has happened, not just in, in our little Shakespeare world, but also at Opera McGill. We opened and closed Giulio Cesare. Uh, we did a double bill of the telephone and La Voix Humaine. And I've been really busy with the cast of A Midsummer Night's Dream, coaching all the roles. This is the time where the students really get into the score. Because we have to get down to how do we count this, you know, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And uh, really making some very tricky musical sections work. Then we can take back everything that we've been working on textually throughout this semester and put it all together uh, so that rehearsals in January um, will be all about the staging and how do we get from, you know, point A to point B and how will my character develop as I move from point A to point B. They're met by moonlight. We're midway through our Shakespeare Saturdays right now, this exploration of academia, opera, and acting technique. And, and you saved the life of a shrew, that's like terrible. With Paul Yakman taking care of the academia, and Patrick, of course, covering the, the opera, and myself covering acting technique. Claude the lion, do it. This institute that I direct, the Institute for the Public Life of Arts and Ideas, one of our missions is to bring the creative arts together with scholarship. Uh, the fit between Shakespeare's text and Britain's uh, score is excellent and informative and a great place to begin to study what happens when uh, uh, an art form like theatre crosses the boundary into uh, opera. A Midsummer Night's Dream is a magical story, uh, of course, because it's uh, a love story between Oberon, the king of the fairies, and Titania, the queen of the fairies. The play is this wonderful story of love set right and of how madness and erotic fury and animality can bring peace and happiness to human beings and to fairies, by the way. It's not like Love Actually the movie, but how Love Actually the movie follows all these different characters and culminates in everybody kind of getting together. Um, that's what A Midsummer Night's Dream is in many, many ways. But it's so hard for her to not say something. You know that feeling when you're like, I'm not going to say anything? Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> the students um, have this tremendous facility uh, with complex texts. Uh, they're very, very quick to understand, very complex, nuanced elements of Shakespeare's texts. And my task is to drive them even further. My name is Dimitri Katatakis, and I'm playing Demetrius, funnily enough, <laughs> in uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. So I'll be playing the role of Hermia, one of the four lovers, and uh, she's the one that basically gets shunned by everybody in the middle of the opera, um, thanks to the love potion. <laughs> Demetrius loves Hermia, but Hermia really does not care for Demetrius a whole lot. You know, the text work we're doing and the text work that Paul is doing also is showing them that every single word has a world inside it. And there's a kind of hunch here, or a bet, that understanding things deeply will make performances better. I really love the, the study of the, the language and uh, seeing how Shakespeare uses particular phrases and things like that to, to turn it. So it's really interesting to have that side by side with a very serious acting technique. Paul Yaknin is absolutely amazing. The little 15 minute times that we have with him just going through and speaking the text and asking questions to him and to each other, to me that, that work is invaluable. And that's really um, telling for, for how we are in the end going to act and perform that piece. Now I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height, her height forsooth. Opera can be so, so grandiose and over the top, so I just want to root these guys in something authentic. The next technique that I showed them would be another layer of script analysis, which is actioning. I greet you. Okay, did you greet her? No. Okay, good, do it. I greet you essentially breaking down what the character says and what the character is doing, or breaking down what they say and interpreting that as actions. The character could be teaching, he could be directing, he could be scolding, he could be mocking, he could be taunting, 
There's a variety of actions. Uh, it's a really basic acting technique. Thus die I. Thus. 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 <laughs> I kill myself. Oh no, informing the audience. Now am I dead. So I've been introducing them to that. We tried it with the Shakespeare text, and we also did it with the libretto. Uh, because it can easily be applied to Shakespeare, it can be applied to modern text, and I think it can also be applied to opera. Truly giving a heartfelt, honest acting performance is hard when you're singing, because often the way we're taught, singing is all about knowing yourself, and, and it's almost a very selfish act. You're breathing, you're supporting, you're doing all these things, and you have technique, and it's very inward. But scene work really is all about responding to the, the situation and your partners, which are always fluctuating. So at the same time, you have to be insanely aware of yourself because you have to nail the next phrase or whatever. You, you have to be living in the world of your partners. What Benjamin Britten does musically is, is just phenomenal. He, he gives us a parody of opera. really the opera Pyramus and Thisbe. And so the music completely changes and, and Bottom sings sort of this bel canto, arioso thing that uh, goes all in the wrong direction. Uh, flute is trying to sing way too high and his voice is constantly breaking. I can't wait for Andrew Bizantz, who is our conductor, to get into the pit with the orchestra and for the lights to go down and for that magic, those magical chords that happen from G major sliding up to F sharp major, sliding down to G major. Because um, it's this, it transports you to a completely new world. And that's really the power of, of Britain's music.